let's try to manipulate this a little bit uh, say uh, let's uh, review the uh, sine a plus b rule you'll find that it's uh, sine a cosine b plus cosine a sine b uh, let's uh, uh, apply uh, this uh, and this to what we have uh, you will find that uh, the, uh, the exponential solution we uh, obtained can be rewritten in this form okay then rearranging the terms to get all the uh, uh, variables sorry all the terms with the uh, real part multiplied by cosine and the uh, uh, imaginary part multiplied by the sine and give each of them another name you'll find that we can write down the, uh, the solution in this form, which is a1 cosine omega t plus a2 sine omega uh, t. Uh, here the solution appears in a form that is more familiar to us, in which uh, you are having uh, two harmonic terms, the sine and the cosine terms, each multiplied by a constant and added together. Again, we can see that there are two solutions added uh, to each other. Uh, finally, uh, using another type of manipulation, let's uh, uh, draw this triangle, uh, a right angle triangle, A1 and A2. You'll find that uh, the hypotenuse, let's call it A, is square root of A1 squared plus A2 squared. Now, uh, you'll also find that uh, cosine the angle, uh, phi, where phi is this angle, okay, uh, you'll find that cosine phi is a2 over a and sine phi is a1 over a and let's just play around with that uh, multiplying uh, uh, sorry uh, removing a1 and a2 you'll get this relation which is the sine uh, relation we saw a little bit earlier and you end up with uh, a form of the solution that looks like x of t equals some constant times sine omega t, but there is what we call a phase shift. Another, the phase, uh, again, the phase shift here is another constant, actually, and A is the amplitude. Uh, the phase shift and the amplitude are the two constants that will need to be uh, uh, evaluated using the initial condition. So, finally, we end up with uh, the solution in three different forms. Uh, the exponential form probably uh, uh, is the one that's uh, m uh, most flexible. Uh, it, uh, it helps uh, a lot in, uh, in analysis, but usually people don't like to see uh, the complex numbers explicitly. However, we'll get back to this uh, form when we uh, start talking about multiple degree of freedom systems. Uh, uh, this uh, form, uh, the compact form, uh, which includes the phase shift is most common uh, in control engineering because it includes uh, the phase and the amplitude and these are two important uh, values uh, generally in uh, control of dynamic systems and probably this is the uh, simplest uh, simplest looking form uh, we can get uh, and uh, it, uh, it looks very uh, straightforward as we learned uh, before Okay, let me now uh, try to illustrate what happens uh, when we see the solution x of uh, t equals a sine omega t plus phi. Okay, this solution is general uh, sinusoidal. Let's start with saying that uh, uh, there is a solution in which phi is uh, zero, okay? So you'll get a sinusoidal curve here. You start with a sine curve that goes in time like this. So you end up with x of t equals uh, uh, this uh, two. Now, the first thing that we need to note is that we have the amplitude. This is what we call the amplitude of vibration, A. You get it from uh, that term. Uh, also, uh, the period of vibration, which is uh, the time the system takes to complete a full cycle uh, here, T, this is equal to uh, 1 
over omega n you get what seconds per radians so you need to multiply by 2 pi okay to get time in seconds so uh, every 2 pi over omega n seconds the system repeats its motion it just repeats it like the sine curve it goes uh, it supposedly goes forever since uh, there is no uh, damping there now as you can see here the system started from time zero with an initial velocity okay but it had zero displacement so at time t equals zero the displacement was zero but the velocity existed let's see what happens if the system started with a different uh, starting conditions here let's again draw but this time the uh, uh, the system started with sorry the uh, dynamic system started like this okay let's see now the system starts like this and it goes on again forever here is a complete cycle so this is actually t which is 2 pi over omega n okay but let's see uh, look at other stuff now first this is the amplitude a right and here you can see that you started with the full value of a uh, and zero velocity the system just you know here it started and then dropped down so it's as if you have given uh, the uh, the mass spring system you've given it an initial displacement with a value a and then let it start moving with starting velocity zero so it starts slowly then drops quickly and completes the cycle in this case uh, you'll find that the phase shift phi is equal to what we call a uh, uh, quarter of a cycle pi over 2 and this pi over 2 is what shifted our uh, see as if the the this axis moved here right as if you moved the axis in this direction uh, uh, a distance of pi over 2 or a time of pi over 2 over omega n uh, this is uh, the what we call the phase shift now if you apply this to different using different boundary conditions you'll find that you may be starting with uh, an initial velocity and an initial uh, deflection so you might actually start something like that and then continue so at the initial point here you have uh, uh, a velocity and you have uh, an initial uh, deflection uh, x0 then you continue and calculate the value of the amplitude and so on and so forth uh, I just wanted to add uh, this part to the lecture in order to demonstrate uh, just what uh, what an amplitude means what a phase angle means here, uh, yeah, here uh, the phase will be if you uh, extended the curve backwards in time, then this is the phase angle which we were talking about phi and over uh, you, we will put it over omega n because this is time actually, not just uh, angle. So, this is uh, the uh, phase angle this is the phase difference uh, of the system.